Okay, so Tenet is packed with a lot of timey-wimey wibbly wobbly stuff and you'd need more than a Doctor Who had a PhD in theoretical physics to understand the process of how it works in the film. However, we've gone over the movie back to front to figure out all its machinations and how everything comes together to form one cohesive loop in which the future relies on the past just like how the past relies on the future. Now there will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the film yet, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. If you're still here, welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition, now let's get into our breakdown. Okay, so before discussing time in the film, we have to discuss time itself. Time is a strange old thing, and even scientists are still not 100% sure on how it exists, what was before it, and what caused it. A lot of questions surrounding it are, when did time start? Does it stretch back trillions of years? If it does, does it have a starting point? And if there is a starting point, does that also mean there's an end point? All these questions could completely rot your brain and it's best not to dwell on them too much as we simply don't have the time to talk about time itself. So I'm basically going to be doing what they do in the movie and skipping over how time works. However, in its most basic terms, time is the progression of existence in which we move towards the future from the present and in doing so create the past. This sequence seems irreversible and because of the way that humans perceive time, we witness things happen in a linear fashion. However, there are theories that time is actually secular and if we were to view time all at once, we would see how everything fits together in one complete sequence in which all things exist at the same time, relying on each other in order to create a complete experience. Now what Tenet does is that it takes how we view time and flips this through a process called time inversion. So instead of viewing time moving from the present into the future, it inverts this perspective and allows objects and the characters to move through the flow of time from the present into the past. Now there are no real jumps in this and the flow of time still moves exactly the same. So 10 years backwards is still the same length of time to the person who's inverted as it would be going 10 years forward. Now in order to talk about how this is accomplished, we have to talk about entropy. In physics, entropy is a thermodynamic quantity which represents a system's thermal energy which changes over time. Entropy is a measurement used to distinguish the past from the future and it tends to work in one direction only. However, according to the movie, due to radiation, scientists in the future are able to reverse this. This is achieved through a process that involves radiating objects. Now, though this is never said, it likely ties into tachyons, which are theoretical particles that are capable of moving faster than the speed of light. This means that they cannot be fully observed and it is possible that they're able to move backwards through time. Though we learn very little about the scientists in the future that have created this method of applying radiation, they have clearly found a way to reverse the entropy of objects and people. Thus, instead of traveling forwards, they start to move backwards and because we are conscious beings, the characters in the film are able to experience time moving in the opposite direction. However, you shouldn't really view this as something that the characters can actually control, and because the past happened the way that it did, which led to the characters eventually having to reverse themselves, the past will still play out the same way that it did, with the characters merely gaining a new perspective of it. The cause and effect leading to the effect will always be the same, and thus it is impossible to change it. We even get a brief hint of this in the movie when we see Michael Caine's character, who I think is also called Michael, explain that two weeks prior to his meeting with the protagonist, Sator's operation happened at the site that we see in the finale of the movie. This was during the opera house and it's something that you only catch on a second watch. I've actually seen the film twice now and I did find it quite funny how it spoils the end of the movie and lets you know that he failed. Now, though the film initially dabbles in the idea of multi-worlds, by the end of it, it sticks firmly with the notion that everything that has happened has to happen and will happen. This removes the idea of the grandfather paradox, which is a theory that's existed in the idea of time travel probably since time travel was first thought up. The grandfather paradox says that if you went back in time and killed your grandfather before he'd created one of your parents, that you would be unable to do so because you would therefore not have been created in order to go back and kill your grandfather. Thus, everything must happen the way that it does in order to avoid creating a paradox. We even see examples of this in the film when our protagonist ends up encountering himself at Sator's vault and their fight plays out the exact same way, completely unchanged. 
No matter what, the characters will go through the motions and the events will always play out exactly the same. The most definitive examples of this come at two key points in the film. Firstly is when Sato enters the inversion machine and he requests that his contact on the outside tells him to relay the events of the car chase exactly how they happened so that when he goes out there he'll follow the motions that led to his inverted self on the outside carrying out actions which he believes will give him a piece of the algorithm. Another key point is during the final battle when we see that the inverted team have to remain inside shipping containers whilst the forward moving team do not. This is because the blue team have already completed the mission and if the team about to go in saw what had happened to them, it might change things. In both instances, this is called a temporal pincer movement in which one team can learn information about an event, then invert oneself and travel back in time to carry it out creating a perfect loop. It's difficult to get your head around but it does follow the rules of cause and effect. The film also gives little key nods to who's inverted and who isn't through its use of colour. When the protagonist is kidnapped by Sato, we see that the forward moving area is red whilst the reversed is blue. This is also later adopted in the final operation and it's a nice little motif that is dotted throughout the film. Now as for how people are inverted, this is actually due to a machine that was created in the future and then it was inverted and sent back. It's not so much a time machine in that it's basically just the UNO switch card that points you backwards instead of forwards. Now because of the way that the film works, there's a lot of confusion over the timeline that certain characters go through. Kat is probably the one that people are most confused about, so she's going to be our main player as we discuss it. The first major event for her is a time on the boat with her husband. Initially they're happy and Kat travels to the shore with their son but upon returning home she sees a woman diving off the boat. Her husband is not there but she suspects that he's having an affair and slowly begins to hate him. She then goes through the events of the film, meeting the protagonist, setting him up with her husband and then she's taken captive and shot by him. Sato believes that she dies from this because to his knowledge there's no way to treat an inverted bullet. However, the protagonist and co invert themselves and Kat and heal her all whilst travelling back to the turnstile that we saw at the art gallery. Here they revert back to normal and travel forward a bit whilst they discuss Sator's plan. Kat and the group then travel back to just before the boat scene that we heard about in which she started to dislike her husband. Now Kat waits here until her past self leaves the boat and then boards it wearing the same clothes that she wore on that day to enact her plan. Because Sator believes that the future version of his wife is dead he does not suspect her to be here and he waits until his past self leaves on a helicopter before going back aboard the boat on the exact same ride that his past self left in in order to not arouse any suspicion. Here he and Kat talk whilst the latter acts like her past self. At the last minute she kills Sato and jumps off the boat which sets in motion her past self seeing the woman diving off. The past Sato returns alive not knowing his future self has just died and he continues as normal. Cat then boards the boat and the domino effect is set off. Now at this time there are two cats in the past. The past version follows the exact same path as the cat who's just killed her husband. The past version then moves through the exact same events that would eventually lead to her going to the boat and killing her husband. The future version remains in the shadows waiting until her past self goes back to the day on the boat so that she can move forward and continue her life. The loop completes itself with there being only one version of Cat in the future and this is the one that we see pick her son up from school at the end. Is that Neil? Is that Neil? That, that's, that's a topic for another video. Now each of the characters follows pretty much this timeline structure except for Sato who doesn't move past the fateful day on the boat. The protagonist would pretty much operate in this manner controlling things from behind the scenes and putting the events in motion that would lead to his past self being captured at the opera house. That's pretty much the events of the film and I promise once you get your head around it you'll see that it all fits together really really neatly and doesn't have any issues which fall apart due to the nature of time travel. It's still very very complex though so if you, if you are confused then make sure you comment below and either I or someone much smarter than me will hopefully explain it to you. Now if you enjoyed this video then please drop a thumbs up and if you haven't checked out our ending explained on the film in which we go over the storyline and how things fit together then you need to go there now.
Don't forget, we're also giving away a free copy of the Avengers on any console, and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 30th of August, so make sure you get involved. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat to us on the Discord server, linked in the description, or at Heavy Spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. You've been the best, I've been Definition, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.